All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, super excited to have a returning guest. Uh, this is my friend, Greg Young. We're going to discuss health. And uh, so for anybody who follows me on the Rich Mind Podcast knows I'm a middle-aged man and I'm trying to figure out things as I go. I just turned 50 this year in 2024. Uh, Greg, I believe, is in his early to mid-40s. And so anyways, we're trying to travel down this journey of life for men's health. Uh, if you caught an episode, maybe uh, a few back, I talked about a pivot within the podcast. And I want to really focus on uh, three different pillars, health, wealth, and legacy. And so when I put that out there, I thought to myself, who in the world would I want to talk, talk to besides just giving you kind of what I'm doing, and what I'm trying to do, who out there in the world, in my uh, world of, of influence, would I know that would uh, have some topics to talk about with health? And Greg Young is the man, meaning he is, as much as I try to be engaged with my own health and I try to do well, you know, I try to drink the water, I try to eat better and I try to, I try, I try, I try. Greg takes it to another level. He's fantastic to the point where, uh, if we've mentioned in an episode before, we will jump on a call every couple of weeks right now. And I'm always picking his brain. What are you trying now? What are you, what are you seeing here? What are you seeing there? And uh, he's always filling me with a bunch of information uh, as far as pertaining to my health, some things that I can try, which is exactly why I brought him back on here to the show today. I, th I hope and I know he's going to bring you a ton of value, some things maybe to think about. Uh, we'll share some of the stories that he's kind of gone through and the journeys. We've got an app that I just discovered uh, last week. He said he's known about it for a little while. I'm excited to share that because just that app alone will be worth you listening to us today if you are interested in trying to improve your health uh, in 2024 and going forward. So Greg, that was a long winded intro to say, welcome to the show, man. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me back, Randy. Uh, you know, repeat guest is always a, an honor here and I'm looking forward to seeing where this conversation goes. So I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. So we, you know, we talk, as I mentioned, every couple of weeks, right? So every now it's like, why don't we just jump on and hit record instead of just having our normal back and forth conversations? Uh, they're always very valuable for me. Uh, hopefully they are for you too. I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but at the same time, we always have a good time back and forth. And I just want this to be super conversational, uh, almost like what we would be doing on our normally weekly or biweekly calls. So uh, the idea of health, um, I know we've talked about your challenges that you've had in the past, uh, diverticulitis, correct? I always try mm -hmm. to get that right. Yeah. Diverticulitis. And, and maybe we'll, uh, go into a, just a little bit about what that, what that is. Um, I know you've talked about it in episodes in the past, uh, here on the rich mind podcast, but talk about your journey and how you've come become this person that maybe wasn't as healthy or not as focused on it as you once were, or what, as you are now, right? Where you were before to where you've become now, where you're like, you're one of the most dedicated people I know to sticking to disciplines and regimens and trying different things. It's, it's really a fascinating thing to watch. And, and, and I'm super proud of you as a friend. So yeah, tell everybody a little bit about how you come from where you were to where you are now. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate the kind words. Um, so yeah, I mean, it all started, um, you know, as a, as a kid, I was a chubby kid kind of growing up and then, you know, in high school, I kind of thinned out a little bit, played some sports, but you know, um, after college or during college, you know, you put on that freshman 15 or whatever you want to call it. And then, um, freshman after college, 20, I really 30, <laughs> yeah, the number can go higher and higher. Um, and it did for me. So, um, yeah, so you can, you know, I just put on that weight and, in my mid twenties, even in my, my thirties, really, I'm 44 and I'm, you know, in 24 right now. Um, so in my thirties, I really didn't pay attention to health all that much because nothing was going wrong. Right. And I was, that was, the, you know, I was in the reactive mode of, well, nothing's going wrong. So I, I'm probably healthy, even though I was overweight, I knew I was fat. Um, you know, I knew I couldn't do the things that I did in college, um, playing the sports and the endurance and, you know, all the, the fun stuff that I like doing. So when 2020 hit, um, even before COVID, this was like January, 2020, when everybody's setting their goals and, you know, getting pumped up for the new year, I really just told myself, I was, I was really decided that I was tired of being fat and overweight. And I really just got to the point where I was so unhappy with myself that I decided to take action and change. And I've tried to do that in the past. You know, it's, um, if you've ever tried to lose weight or achieve any goal, really, but losing weight, yeah, exactly. Everybody's been everybody's been down that road. Losing weight for whatever reason is one thing that a lot of people they try to do, they want to do, 
and they just, it doesn't work for whatever reason. And the one thing that I've learned is that all of our actions reflect our identity of ourself. And this is actually something that I took from a, a podcast, uh, Rob Dial. He's the host of the Mindset Mentor. So I want to give him credit, but it really made me dive into you know, like what I believe about myself and what I think I can achieve. And this is what I was going through in 2020. And then COVID hit two or three months later in March. And that's when I really decided to use that as a, not as an excuse to gain weight and, you know, um, cause I know a lot of people during COVID, they put on some weight just because they were, you know, yeah, exactly. A I lot did. of people are doing I that. was one of those. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I, I really was conscious about my intentions and thought, you know, how can I use this to my advantage? You know, being locked down and not going out for lunches and dinners, which, what, which is what I was doing for, you know, with friends and family and clients and everything. So I really used my environment and I just turned it on its head and said, all right, I'm going to make this the healthiest environment that I can to allow me to continue this goal of losing weight. Because like I said, I was so tired of myself. I was really down on myself. I had very low self-worth, self-esteem, and I know I needed to change that. And this is one thing that I think people get backwards is they feel like they need to get motivated first and then take action. Because I was guilty of that probably all of my life with a lot of my goals, especially with weight losses. We got to feel motivated and where's the willpower going to come from? And this time I'm going to do it. And that didn't work for me and it doesn't work for a lot of people. Um, so I'm just kind of sharing what works for me, but um, I really had to take action. And then once you start taking action and then you build that habit, even five, six days in a week in, two weeks in, that's when the motivation comes because you're actually seeing, Hey, I can do this. You know, I've been doing it for seven days and the world didn't end. <laughs> feel I'm still feeling full. I'm not starving myself. So I'll kind of leave it at that, but that's the, the gist of my story. And we can kind of go, you know, wherever, but I know you've, you know, you yourself, you've had issues with weight in the past. And like you said, you've gained weight during COVID. So what are your thoughts on this as well? Yeah. So my issue is dis the discipline to keep going. I'm great at getting out the gate. Uh, getting started, making the decision, and then moving forward uh, towards a particular goal. I just always fall off. And I would say that I can get to the goal pretty, I don't say easily is not the right word, but I'm pretty consistent with getting to the goal. It's once I get there, though, I'm, I struggle to maintain. I struggle the, the, dis, the discipline, excuse me, to, to maintain it. And so I usually fall back. To be honest with you, drinking is probably my biggest thing. I don't consider myself a heavy drinker but I'm an occasional drinker and I actually enjoy it. I'm a bourbon. I like bourbon. Um, and I like drinking bourbon. I like sipping on a bourbon in the evenings nice. and it's not to get drunk. It's just, I'd really enjoy, uh, the taste and enjoy, uh, bourbon itself, uh, an occasional beer, but that's usually my issue. I remember during COVID that's my problem as I was drinking way too much, which again, it wasn't because I was drinking to get drunk. It was just, I just was consuming too much alcohol, but then also being very, stationary. I wasn't moving. Um, should have been, but wasn't. I had the opportunity to get out, walk around. I mean, though we weren't necessarily going places, but I could have, I could have been doing anything. Right. Um, so anyways, that's usually my issue is that I, once I make a decision, I'm pretty good about following through and getting into the routines, but it's once I get to a certain point, I usually then fall back off the wagon, which you don't. And that's kind of where I want to bring it back to you with saying that that's one thing I admire about you is that you appear that, and I'm speaking to you as, as a friend from the outside, right? Cause I'm not with you 24 seven, but the times that I have been with you, you've invited me into your home. And so I see how you live on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's, so it's like, you're, you don't even appear to be tempted with bad food, having a drink, the things that once again, I get tempted by after a while. And then I fall off that wagon how do you stay disciplined? You can help me. How do you, how do you stay focused when the, the temptations are out there pulling you towards something that you probably shouldn't be dealing? Well, I think the way I kind of put it in my head anyway, is I, I just changed the, the frequency. Um, cause I definitely get tempted and I definitely don't eat hundred percent healthy seven days a week. Right. Like I'll be but honest you're, about that. But you're hundred percent healthy is like, 
hundred percent of everybody else in this whole world, Greg. <laughs> and I, I, I jokingly say that. I mean, but yeah, you eating not eating healthy is like maybe a chip, a chip, like not a bag of chips, but a chip. Or you know what I mean? Anyways, I just wanted to jokingly say that because I just know that you're you're tough on yourself, even when you say that you don't eat healthy. Uh, but anyways, please continue. I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, you're you're fine. No, um, but I guess my point was like. Yeah, like everybody has their own, um, you know, balance or harmony of what's healthy and how many, you know, quote unquote cheat meals or how many drinks you want to have at night, whatever that is, right? And whatever that is going to work for you, but it also depends on your goal. If you're looking to maintain, then yeah, maybe I can have once a week, I can have a couple of slices of pizza and it's probably not going to affect, you know, my body weight or my fat or whatever. But if I'm looking to lose weight, like I did back in 2020, it was, you have to be pretty strict. You have to understand, you know, the the reason why you're doing this. Um, and this is what I kind of came up with is it's basically emotions versus logic. And for me, like, you know, being a fat kid and being even a fat adult or, you know, that was in the past now, but um, being that person, it was all emotion, right? Like I wasn't logically eating two slices of pizza to achieve any goal or to in- improve my health. I mean, I, I think everybody knows two slices of pizza, especially two, three times a week, it's not really going to be the healthiest choice. So, so three and four slices, that's not good either. Probably not. I mean, if you're, <laughs> um, you know, again, depending on your goal, but depending on your goal, <laughs> but yeah. So, so I kind of use that, like that logic versus emotion because emotionally it is hard. It is very hard to change the way you eat. You know, I, I don't want to give up eating the, the foods that I love, but they're, if they're unhealthy for me, then I have to switch over to, all right, logically, if I want to change myself and create the life that I really want, will this action of eating these two slices of pizza be healthier? Is it allowed? Is, is it going to allow me to achieve my goal? No. So plain and that's that's it. Pretty much plain and simple. You have to really, or I chose to really, kind of side on the logical side, and it's really hard. But put your emotions away of, oh, that ice cream is going to be good, but is that going to help me achieve my goal? No, it's not. So I'm going to skip that ice cream for now and maybe I'll have it, you know, two weeks from now and it'll be a smaller portion than I normally have. So once again, that's where I admire you and I'm grateful for you being my friend because it's like your motivation even to help me. So it's, it's when I get tempted, I think, okay, what would Greg do? I honestly say that to myself, what would Greg do at this moment? So You've had a significant change, meaning how many pounds did you lose? We've talked about it, you know, how you went from this, this person before to where you are now. It's, it's actually a very significant amount of of weight that you've lost. How long, how much has it been? So I lost uh, 60 pounds from 2020 to about 2022 and then roughly maintained, you know, up and down a little bit here and there, but roughly about 55, 60 pounds down from, from that original number. And yeah, it was it was quite the journey for sure. And, and honestly, I did a lot through nutrition. I wasn't really working out very much during that time. So it just goes to show, at least for me, and I think for a lot of other people, um, people, they emphasize a lot on exercise and working out. And that has benefits by itself for your, you know, your organs and your blood flow and all that kind of stuff. But for, for the weight loss journey, at least for me, um, it was not working out very much and just really sticking to nutrition and learning about nutrition and really diving into it. I agree with that. So as I mentioned, I've been on multiple journeys, right? Up and down with my weight. Uh, I've been as high as maybe 205 ish and as low as 175. So, you know, whatever that number is about 38, 30 pounds total of a fluctuation. I'd probably say 185 is probably ideal. 185 to 190 would be a consistent ideal weight for myself at this point in my life that I'd be happy with. Uh, but so I've, I've been super lean, but then I've, I've been a little heavy as well. But when I've gotten to that lean point, I would agree. I guess I just wanted to agree with you that when I was going through that process, it was more of the nutrition than it was the working out. I was working out, but I was not, that wasn't the focus. And that wasn't the only thing I was trying to do to get myself to that point where I was at that 175 ish. I'm about, I'm about six foot and 175. I was I was pretty thin and obviously pretty lean back in the day. Uh, this has been a few years ago, but then, uh, yeah. So obviously I'll put it back on and we're going to try to take it back off, Greg. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's where we're going to try to do that moving forward, trying to get better with some of my nutrition. So you mentioned, 
well, so what are some of your uh, habits or foods that you try? What are your biggest temptations? You mentioned ice cream. You mentioned pizza. Are there any any others that that get you? Like it, like if it's sitting right there in front of you, or when you even when you're walking around in the store, you're like, man, I really. Or at a, at a restaurant, right? You, you're looking at the menu. It's like, wow, I could really like that right now, right? Is there anything like that that comes to mind? Yeah, I mean, definitely it's pizza for me. Um, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up in New York, so pizza <laughs> is a staple. Um, even bad pizza tastes good because it's, it's pizza. It's, it just tastes great. Um, that's probably the biggest one that I've had to kind of adapt. I still eat quote unquote, like regular pizza every once in a while, but you know, my wife is really good in the kitchen and, you know, we make healthier pizzas. We make, you know, vegan pizzas. We make other kind of pizzas. So it's just kind of like having that substitute. Same thing with ice cream. Um, I actually make kind of like a, a sherbet ice cream and it's not like ice cream. It doesn't have that like creaminess or like that sugar hit to your brain or whatever, but it's, it's hundred percent healthy. Like it's all basically fruits and um, yeah, basically fruit. So it's frozen. It's not like a, I think I picture like a smoothie. It's not a smoothie. It's, it's more frozen. Yeah. It's frozen. kind of like a custard. So it's the action of eating ice cream where you can put on, you know, like some nuts or some other stuff that kind of make it feel like you're eating a bowl of ice cream, but it's not, you know, sugar and milk and all that kind of stuff that just doesn't agree with, um, you know, my body at this point. So, so I'd say those maybe, are two. Yeah. So let me stop you right there. Let me, let's maybe help some folks out there. They're like, okay, what, how do you do that? What, what is that? How do you make that? Walk me through. I don't, you know, whether you speak ingredients or not, I, I, that's really doesn't really matter at this point, but how do you even do that? What's, what's the process of creating this sherbet like similar to ice cream that kind of curbs your appetite for that, that ice cream? So I found this, in, this recipe in a book, um, you know, and I just part of the journey is diving into cookbooks and, and everything like that, which I find it's, it's really fun and interesting, but off the top of my head, cause I made it like a couple of days ago. It is basically cherries, one frozen banana, some almond milk or any kind of like nut milk. I guess you can use regular milk if you really wanted to and um, some vanilla extract and that's it. And then you put it in a food processor, basically just blend it until you get it to the consistency that you want. And that's it. So that's what I mean. There's just basically two fruits, um, a little bit of nut milk and then some vanilla extract, which is, you know, has a little bit of sugar, but it's not like sugar, sugar in my opinion. And it just it hits the spot at night and it, you know, kind of just um, puts that craving away for um, the real ice cream or, you know, something even worse. Love that. So the cherries, are they, tell me about the cherries. Are, I mean, cause you can get canned cherries, you can get, you know, fresh cherries. I mean, where, where are the cherries? What kind of cherries are you, I guess, are you using for that? Well, so for these are, they're frozen cherries um, okay. just cause it's going to be a frozen custard. Freezer. Okay. Yeah. And then the that banana, same thing, um, freeze the banana like overnight and then It'll just create that consistency a lot better. Interesting. Okay. So that you taught me that. I think you might've mentioned that to me before, but I don't think we've ever gone into actually how you make that. So yeah, pretty simple. You, you blend it up like a, it's a smoothie and then you just freeze it. I assume. Is that mm -hmm. what you said? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So just, just things like that where, you know, kind of, you take one thing that you used to eat, um, you know, like ice cream, and then you turn it into, all right, well, I found this cherry sorbet or whatever you want to call it. It hits the spot. I really enjoy it. Um, even my wife, she's like, Hey, when are you going to make that ice cream again? Because <laughs> so it's becoming, you know, it's, it's just one step. It's a small, you know, part of that, that compounding effect of, well, here's one replacement that I made. And then what's the next thing that I can, you know, do. And then every once in a while, if you go out and you're with friends and you're at an ice cream parlor, yeah, have a real ice cream cone or whatever. And, you know, don't think twice about it, but I just don't make it part of my, my daily life at home. Love that. So something like that. Anything else that comes to mind? Uh, I'm trying to just, uh, you you live it every day. So it might be difficult for you to think through kind of the things that you do that you've set in place, right? The taking the emotions out of it, as far as you said that earlier, as far as thinking more logical versus taking the emotions out of it. Is there any other thing that your life or your daily activities that you've put in place that just take the emotions out of it where you can just act or instead of react, right? Act instead of react. Yeah. Anything like that that comes to mind? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So, I mean, with food, it's, it's pretty, I don't want to say, uh, I guess it's simple. Um, well, simple for me now, I guess, just because I've been doing it so long. Um, but just finding those replacements, like I mentioned, that is probably the biggest thing. Um, just because 
you know, I still want to eat pizza. And even if I'm eating a healthier version of pizza, it still satisfies me. It's not like maybe a hundred percent of eating like a New York style, you know, slice of pizza, but it, you know, it gets me through that, um, that temptation or me going out and like saying, Oh, let's go order a pizza. Cause it's Friday night. So I think food is probably the, the biggest thing that I can logically kind of flip my, flip that switch and flip my mindset to, um, and then working out has never been an issue for me, really, um, just because I like playing sports and, and being active. So that one, I know that's maybe harder for some other people, but I think it's, again, just going back to that logic of, well, do you want to achieve the goal or do you not? Because, um, you know, I hate to bring scarcity into this conversation, but um, but kind of follow me here. So abundant thinking is using and instead of or, right? So you can do you can do this and you can do that instead of, Scarcity thinking, well, you can only do one of these things, pick one. So if you're trying to lose weight like I did, it's either or, not and. So you can either have that slice of pizza or you can achieve your health goals, but you can't do both. And that's where my logic really set in. You know, you can have those alcoholic drinks every night after work, or you can refrain from doing that and being, you know, a little bit healthier each day. Maybe your sleep improves, then you wake up in a better mood, but you can't have both. So that's where I really drew the line of, well, do I really want to eat pizza like I did for the last 40 years and have those results of being 215 pounds? Or do I want to really discipline myself for a short period of time and then I can enjoy these things every once in a while and maintain? And that's exactly what I did. So I kind of cho I chose to um, that scarcity mode at first, and then it leads to the abundant mode afterwards with the maintenance phase. Love it. I know water intake is a big, as you're taking a drink of water right now, right? And I've got a big old glass of water next to me as well. <laughs> if you're watching this on video, uh, I know when I learned this from a, a personal trainer that I had a while back, as far as drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water, is that something that you've heard as well? And is that something you try to live by or is that tell me more about how that, how water fits into your life? Yeah. Water is definitely uh, very big. Um, I've heard all, all those calculations and I think, for the most part, that's about right. Um, you know, again, I'm not like a nutritionist or anything like that, so I'm just going yeah, off of. I. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. This is just two guys just having a conversation, folks. We're not, we're not any specialized anything at all, right? We're just trying to go over the some of the things that we're talking about that we be trying to do in our own lives. But yeah, please continue. Yeah, so yeah, so it's all anecdotal, but um, but yeah, water was one of the things that I didn't really drink a lot of water back. Um, you know, when I was heavier, um, and now I, you know, I have an app for it where I actually just you pop it in every time I drink a 16 ounce glass of water, it'll just track it for the day. So I usually shoot for, yeah, right around 80 to 90 ounces because I'm about 160 pounds. And one hack that I've kind of used is um, I like, I like iced tea. Um, I like, you know, cause I went from when I was uh, fat and overweight, I was a soda drinker, uh, both diet and regular. And once I realized, well, that's not really serving me, I had to give that up. And then I switched to, you know, iced tea and everything. So, um, so now to get water in my system, because drinking plain water, it's, you know, kind of boring. It doesn't really taste like anything, uh, but again, logically, I know I have to drink it in the, every day. So I'll just, you know, throw a tea bag in there. Um, and you can kind of mess around with different teas, different flavors, decaffeinated, caffeinated, depending on what you want, but it's just another way. It's an easier way for me to drink 16 ounces of water. If there's some semblance of flavor in there, as opposed to just a plain glass of water, which I do both, but it just helps me get through the day with, you know, probably two glasses of, uh, of tea every day. How do you deal with sweeteners? Are you more of a, do you do any artificial sweeteners at all? Where are you at with sugar and art and sweeteners? So I messed around with sweeteners a little bit, probably in the, I don't know, um, in the early stages of my, my weight loss there. And right now I don't really do many sweeteners. Um, at just all? because no, not really. Really? Yeah. Um, not in the teas that I drink from from the house. If I go out to a restaurant or something, I might have one of those, you know, sweet and lows or whatever. But, you know, I know they're not good for you, but every once in a while. Um, but yeah, honestly, I found all the information about all the sweeteners. It was so confusing of which one's healthy, which one's good. This one's not good for you anymore. So I was just like, let me just drink this and, you know, put a little lemon in there and then um, whatever the flavor is, I just kind of, I kind of go for there and 
it's amazing how your taste buds, they change over time. And I remember after being really strict, I'm losing weight. And then I think I drank, I forget what it was, or I ate something really, really sugary. It was like a brownie or something. And I was like, I was taken back. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is way too sweet. I can't eat this thing anymore. <laughs> so my taste buds had changed, but before I could probably eat two of those brownies in a sitting easily with a glass of milk. Um, so in <laughs> a Mountain Dew to wash it down. <laughs> yeah. And a Mountain Dew on the back end. I mean, it was, that was, you know, that was fat Greg. And, um, you know, right now it's your, your taste buds definitely change. And I mean, have, have you tried different diets or different foods where your taste buds have changed or maybe you try a food 10 years later and you're like, Oh, I, I like mushrooms now. I didn't like them 10 years ago. So I would, yes, the tastes definitely change. Uh, the pop or soda, whichever part of the country you're in, right? We call it pop here in the Midwest. Soda. Uh, yeah. So Coke, Dr. Pepper, I was a Mountain Dew guy there for the longest time when I was young, which when, when I was young, I mean, I could drink and eat anything and I didn't put on weight at all. I was so active really too with sports and things, but I realized that I couldn't do that. Um, every now and then. So the little small little cans that they've got out now, I think there's seven ounce cans. Every now and then I'll have, I just like Dr. Pepper. I just love how it hits me, to be honest with you. Yep. Uh, the bite, I just, so every now and then I'll have a little mini can of Dr. Pepper. And even then, like you said, it's, I don't want to say it's too sweet, but I can definitely taste it. It's more intense than it used to be when I was drinking it every day or multiple times a day. I used to for the longest time, uh, every morning, my go-to drink was just to have a, a pop in the morning, literally first thing, like on the way to work. When I was working in my retail days, yeah, I'd crack one open on my hour drive and finish it up by the time I got there. And that was literally my, my wake up drink. I've never been a coffee drinker. Uh, so, or even tea, I'm not a huge fan of tea. My mom loved tea and I've tried it many multiple different ways and different times. And she could drink that stuff. Like there's no, like you can, you can drink a lot of tea as well. But I just I just can't stomach tea. So, anyways, pop was always my go-to. Uh, but to go back to your question, yeah, it's it's changed a lot over the years, even for myself, because I try to I try not to drink as much or even consume as much sugar, even though in the the uh, the other different types of sugars, right? You mentioned sweet and low, the sucralose, the different types of sugar. Uh, I know those aren't as good for you as well either. So anyways, it's tough for me because that's, I have a sweet tooth. Like you're talking about brownies. Yeah. Brownies, <laughs> cake. Uh, obviously we're getting ready to head into the holiday season. So pies and uh, yeah, it's, it's always a challenging time for me. We'll see if I can strap on some of the Greg discipline and uh, keep myself from at least consuming as much as I normally would. Maybe that'll help me for sure. Yeah. And it's funny because you mentioned, you know, kind of going to, um, or wanting, needing that Dr. Pepper or that Mountain Dew right in the morning. I was actually the same way. And it was so bad where, well, when we lived back in Arizona, we were living probably about a quarter mile from, um, you know, a local gas station that had all the fountain drinks and everything. And this is when I realized that, um, I was addicted to soda. I would get up <laughs> every morning. I'm raising my hand. Yes. Yeah. I've been addicted to soda for sure. But like it's, it's true. It's not even like, you know, it's, it's definitely, there's been studies on it and everything. And, um, but yeah, I would drive every morning and, or I would work it into my day as a realtor. I'd be like, oh, cool. I'm going to stop at the gas station real quick. Then I'm going to go meet this client or, but on days that I didn't have to, um, you know, meet anybody, it was probably eight thirty nine thirty in the morning where I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go to the grocery store or the uh, gas station real quick and get a soda. And it was a big 32 ounce soda. I mean, it wasn't like a small one, like a seven ounce one, like you're talking about. <laughs> you're talking about the big gulp, the the big, yeah, the one the that's big bigger boy. than your head. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, you need two hands to carry it. It was, you yeah, know, there you go. It won't fit um, in the cup holder because it's so big. <laughs> yeah, it was. So that's when I realized I'm like, I I am addicted to this substance, you know, and that was like a real eye opening moment because I was addicted to, to some foods as well. You know, it's the way it hits your brain is, it's just, it's amazing. It feels great. And emotionally you're like, Oh, that slice of pizza or that Mountain Dew. But like I said, after a while, the, the compound effect can, you know, work negatively when you're putting on those pounds and you're not taking care of yourself. So again, just going back to the, the emotions versus logic. And that's, I had to pop myself out of that bubble for that I was in for quite a while. 
hard was it for you to do that? Meaning, because what I've learned from you is almost you went cold turkey, right? You almost, you were doing it one day and the next day you weren't like at all. How bad or how tough was that physically? Did you go through withdrawals or anything like that? I mean, uh, caffeine sometimes is a big one for me. I still uh, consume or need caffeine, right? Just from headaches or that type of thing. I'm obviously addicted to it. But yeah, withdrawals or anything like that, how tough was that for you when you went from, you know, drinking your pops and your bad food to, you know, the decision, the lifestyle you're living now? So I went through a few iterations um, where, you know, I would, like we were talking about, I would suck myself up and have the willpower and say, all right, I'm going to wean myself off. So that was one iteration. So the headaches weren't as bad. But then when I basically went back on that wagon and that didn't work, then I was like, all right, I need to do this cold turkey. And I was kind of like, I don't want to say mean to myself, but I was like, you know what? If you get a headache and it's really bad, you deserve this because this, <laughs> suck this it is up, right. <laughs> yeah. Suck it up. This is the hill that you need to climb. And you don't have any control over how bad this headache's going to be, but this is the situation that you put yourself in and these are the consequences and it's going to be short term. It might be a two day headache or a three day headache or whatever that looks like, but on day three, you're going to be clear. You're going to be fine. And that is when you need to really, you know, get going. And that's where the motivation kind of kicked in of like, all right, the, the bad stuff's behind me. Everything in front of me is good and I can achieve this goal now. So but yeah, I've been through both iterations and it, it's not easy, but you know, it's, it's worth it in the end. And I would agree with that. Meaning the cold Turkey option has been best for me. I used to smoke and, and chew tobacco back uh, when I was in my twenties and I went cold Turkey on getting off of both of those. And that was a challenge, you know, to say the least, as far as how I felt the habit that I had created. And that was something I was able to quit. And, and I haven't, uh, touched or been back to either one of those for going on 30 years now. So wow, congrats. Yeah. Well, thanks. But it's, I need to do that with my food and my, my sugar intake and my bourbon intake. It, that's what I need to do. But I guess that I just want to reiterate that the cold Turkey option has worked best for me when I've tried to kind of try or, or wean myself off slowly off of something. I don't ever, I personally don't ever get the result that I'm looking for. So just recently I've just made some decisions in within my own life that I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm not going to do that anymore. Like I said, I'm great out the gate and I'm great at getting in a particular goal. I just need to see myself through to past the goal to a lifestyle like, like you've tried to create for yourself. And maybe that's where you can help me moving forward, Greg, kind of putting it out there into the world that you can help me stay on path and stay on track uh, when I reach this destination that I'm trying to get to, which is super cool. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, and obviously we're recording this, so this is even better, but if oh, you want nuts. accountability around this, <laughs> obviously we talk every couple of weeks here. So yeah. don't be, uh, don't be afraid. I'll, I'll happily, um, you know, hold you accountable and hold your feet to the fire for whatever you're looking to do. I just set myself up, didn't I? That was yes, not you the did. Plan. <laughs> you're welcome. The yeah, the good parts and bad parts about going going into a recording and creating a podcast because <laughs> it's uh, it'll be out there forever. Unless I guess I could delete it all, but you know I probably won't do that either. But anyways, yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that, man. That's where you've been a great help and influence for me as well. So uh, I think we're going to start wrapping this one up. We talked about the app. Maybe let's let's go into that. Let's share with the app that I discovered about a week ago. As soon as I found, it, I'm like, Greg, have you heard of this? I sent it to you, and you're like, Yeah. I've heard of that. And that's like, why did you say anything to me? Cause it's super cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, the app is called Yuka Y U K A. So if you go, I'm on Apple, I assume it's the same in Android. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it on Android, but anyways, if you go and search for Y U K A, it's a free app, um, which is even better, but it's an app where you can go out and scan products, food products, even health products. You were telling me you were scanning uh, shampoos and I haven't mm -hmm. gotten that part far yet, but anyways, it's health products and food and it'll give it a grade meaning uh, bad, poor, good, and excellent. I think if I'm not mistaken, I don't have it pulled up right in front of me right now, but it's anyways, it gives it a grade. Uh, but then it also tells you why it gives you the grade, which I think is super cool. It tells you what is necessarily good inside of it. But then it also tells you some positives that are in it as well. Tell me about your experience with the Yuka app that you didn't share with me until I found it. I'm just teasing. yeah. So my brother, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my brother mentioned this to me probably like a year ago. 
Um, and he was using it and I was like, oh, cool. Let me download it and find it, you know, find out what's going on about it. Um, you know, we don't buy a lot of food that have labels, you know, cause we're trying to eat, you know, fruits and vegetables and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, once in a while we'll buy some stuff and not to say we never do. Um, but I use it, like you said, more for, um, like household products, like deodorant, um, hair gel was the first one that I used it for because I don't know, this just kind of like popped in my head. And the one that I was using was very poor. Um, it had all these bad things in there and I was like, oh, this is really eye opening. And then I was in the grocery store, literally scanning stuff. And I <laughs> it's found addictive. A, Once you it start is. doing it, it's like, wow, is this good? Is that good? Right. Even if it's stuff that you used to eat or maybe every now and then you'll eat it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's like a game you play, right? Like, yeah, how can exactly. I, you know, how can I best myself? So, um, so yeah, I ended up buying another hair gel that is uh, better. It's not a hundred percent, you know, uh, free of chemicals or whatever, but it was eye opening. I went from, you know, maybe a five out of a hundred to maybe like a 70 out of a hundred. So I feel a little better, better about myself and the decision that I'm making. Um, but yeah, it's just a really cool app. There's a lot of those apps that are, are, you know, just kind of out there that you don't really know about, but, um, it just kind of can move the needle forward, you know, very little bit, but it just, you know, over time it, it all moves forward it all adds up. And that's kind of the way I look at it, right? If you, if you just start paying attention a little bit, even just a little bit about what you're putting into your body or even putting on your body, you're talking about mm -hmm. hair gels and, and soaps and shampoos and things. They say your skin is your largest organ and it's yep. a living, breathing thing, right? So just because you don't necessarily feel it on the inside doesn't mean that you shouldn't be treating your skin and your scalp or any other part of your body, just as well as you are what you're consuming from, from a food standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like a game. It's uh, I, as soon as I found it, I started scanning all kinds of stuff in the house and I was like, I can't eat this and I'm not going to eat that. So that's where I'm kind of in that, that phase right now of just eliminating things. I told my wife, Stacy, I told her there were some things in the, in the, uh, uh, in the pantry or whatever. I'm like, yeah, you might as well just throw that away. Cause I'm not eating it and I don't recommend you eat it. Uh, so anyways, it was just a fascinating thing to discover, but then to treat it like a game. And it's, it's like, you can, like you said, move the needle forward, even in a small little bit, drinking the water. We talked about drinking water. You mentioned that uh, you track your water in an app. Is that a specific app? You didn't mention that. Is there an app that you use for that? Um, let me maybe to share with the folks. Yeah. Let me see what it is. Actually. There's a few of them. This one's called uh, thirsty. So thirsty. pretty simple. Thirsty. Yeah. There's spelled like it sounds. Or spelled just, is it a yep. free app as well? Yeah, it's free. I think there's like a paid version or whatever, but the free one is very basic. But if you go on Apple or Android, there's, um, I don't want to say a million, but there's a lot of water tracking apps. Um, just find one that, you know, works for you and is easy. And um, I, another hack, I, I literally put it on my home screen. So it's like one of the apps mm. that I see every time I open up my phone. So it's a reminder of, oh, track your water, track your water. But yeah, that would, that would be another, you know, just kind of quick, uh, quick hack, I guess, to kind of move things forward and really remind yourself about, you know, drinking water and using the, the Yuka app. Yeah, we'll definitely put those uh, links to those different apps in the show notes as well. Was there anything else that you used at the very beginning of your process that you used to kind of help with the discipline piece? Was there any other apps or, or did you do any other things, whether journaling or anything like that to keep yourself on track at the very beginning when you made the decision to move to this lifestyle that you're living now? Yeah. One thing, and you mentioned it earlier, um, was you, you actually used me as an example, like what would Greg do in this situation, which yeah. I find funny, but I, you know, humbling as well. It's like, true, I appreciate Greg, that. I'm telling you, I, I do that. I was like, what would Greg do right now? And then I I can't eat it. And that's, that's the answer. I can't eat it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's totally. Cause I do, I did that same thing and I still do that to this day. But one thing that I used, and I think I've told you this before, but when I came out of the hospital with diverticulitis, I reached out to our friend, Dr. Amy Novodny, and I Im implored the, the who, not how, instead of trying to figure out how am I going to do this? That seems very overwhelming. But yeah, Dr. Amy, she yeah, is shout really out to smart. Dr. Amy. Yeah. She's really smart. She knows nutrition. I, we've had conversations even before I had my little incident about nutrition. Um, so that was one of the things I reached out to somebody that I, you know, I knew, like, and trusted. Um, and even to this day, I'm like, well, what would Dr. Amy do? What would Dr. Amy say? And sometimes I'll reach out to her directly because I don't know. But in my mind, usually I'll know that Amy would be like, no, don't eat that burger or don't eat this because that's not what she would do. And you know, she's my, my kind of like my guiding path or my guiding light there when it comes to 
nutrition and health. So that's always in my head. What would, what would Dr. Amy do? And for everybody who's listening, find that person who is that authority in your life or that figure that you look up to and say, what would that person do? And then kind of follow that advice. Um, I mean, that would be my best advice. That's kind of what I did. I'm coming out of the hospital there. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Shout out to Dr. Amy. I actually interviewed Amy very early in the episodes of the Rich Mind Podcast. I want to say maybe episode 10, between 10 and 20. I don't remember exactly the number off the top of my head. Search for that at that interview. Amy is a fantastic human, uh, very knowledgeable, very giving, and it's she's just a, a great, great person. Yeah. Shout out to Dr. Amy. Appreciate you bringing that up. So now everybody will leave or should leave and go out. And when they're sitting down to eat, they should say, okay, two things. What would Greg do? And what would Amy do? Dr. Amy. <laughs> and so if you do that, then maybe that'll help you make some different choices in terms of what you're consuming throughout the day. But Greg, man, this has been a lot of fun. Is there anything else you feel like we should leave the listeners with today that uh, I think we've uh, packed a lot of, you know, some of the things that we're trying to do on a day-to-day basis. I appreciate you sharing your 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 ice cream substitute. That's fantastic. And obviously we've shared a few apps, right? So yeah, is there anything else you can think of that would be of benefit for the listeners today? Um, I guess the last thing I would say is we kind of hit on it, but yeah, just the compound effect. This doesn't happen overnight. Most things worth achieving rarely do happen overnight. So it took me about 18 months to lose the 60 pounds. And I know there's people that have done it faster. People have done it slower, whatever works for you. But yeah, it, it doesn't happen overnight, no matter um, what you're going to do. So keep that in mind and just keep moving forward. We're all different. Yeah, we're all on a different different paths, different time frames. Our bodies are all different. So yeah, I would agree with that as well. There's times where I feel like I'm putting all the effort, not necessarily seeing the result. And then other times, you know, the result will peel off really quick. It just kind of really depends on that phase of life or where your body is. So I would definitely uh, say that is true, has been true for me as well. So if Greg, uh, you've been on episodes in the past, but if folks are out there, again, maybe catching you for the first time and saying, okay, I need to get more close proximity to Greg and learn more from him as far as from a nutrition standpoint and how he's living his, this lifestyle that, that they might be craving to have for themselves. What are the best places for people to get to know you a little bit better? Yeah. The best way to get a hold of me at this point is, um, honestly, it's just on Facebook. It's the easiest way. So yeah, find me on Facebook. Uh, you can put my first and last name in there. There's not many names like that. So it's easily um, findable or research. Um, you can figure that out. And, um, and yeah, I was going to say, I know we mentioned this um, offline, but um, if anybody wants a copy of Next Level Your Life, it was a, uh, a book that I wrote one chapter in. I wrote about this exact topic, about losing weight and you know the struggles that I went through and everything. So if you want a free copy of that book, I'll sign it for you, pop it in the mail. Just shoot me a uh, message on Facebook and happy to do that. That'd be fantastic. So Greg Young is spelled, spell your last name for everybody because it, it sounds one way, but then it isn't as far as the way it's spelled. Tell everybody how to, how to spell your name as far as when they're searching for you on Facebook. Yep, it's uh, J-U-N-G-E. So Young is spelled J-U-N-G-E. So the first time I thir- heard and, and met Greg and I, I was calling him Jung and he's like, no, that's not quite right. Yep. <laughs> he was being nice about it because I'm sure you get that a lot. But anyways, just want to make sure that everybody understood that. So yeah. Uh, search for Greg on Facebook, Greg Young, J-U-N-G-E. And uh, yeah, hit him up. He'd be, yeah, he'll be very responsive. He's been fantastic and he'll definitely help you in any way he possibly can. Uh, grab a copy of that chapter of Next Love of Your Life. Uh, I actually have a physical copy here myself. He signed it and sent it to me. Uh, it's a great chapter. It goes into detail about his struggles with his uh, diverticulitis. Uh, we didn't go into that with, in this episode, but that was really a big changing point in his life. It was a great story, and maybe it can be some inspiration for you to get be- yourself on this health journey to discover exactly how you can get yourself better, feeling better on a day-to-day basis. So Greg, man, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, we always hit record. We've got a few ideas before we we hit record, and then to, to get in here and produce it and make it happen, it's always a lot of fun. I just appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks, Randy, for always having me, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So folks go out there, have a fantastic day. Start paying a little bit more closer attention to your health and to your, your fitness, right? The idea of that we're trying to, that I'm trying to do for myself personally, as I mentioned throughout this episode is I'm, I'm up and down, right? And I think we all are. 
at this point in my life, I'm trying to, to get back on uh, getting a little bit better for myself, paying attention to what I'm eating. Uh, go out there and download those apps that we talked about here in this episode and start paying attention to the things that you're doing, things that you're consuming. And uh, Greg and I both are, are testaments that if you do that on a consistent basis, you can definitely get yourself in a better position moving forward in 2024 and beyond. So go out there, have a fantastic day. We appreciate your time and attention. And uh, we'll talk to you on the next episode. We'll talk soon. Bye now.